everybody. Welcome to the Homeworkies podcast. And we're really excited today. Today's kind of a bonus episode just for fun. We are talking about the latest in streaming. And uh, there's no better person to have with me to talk about this than my friend Austin Burke is here. And Austin, thank you so much for coming back. Oh, of course. I love doing this. There have been, uh, well, not a lot of great stuff on streaming this year, but there's been a lot that I've covered. Yeah. So I can't wait yeah. to talk about this, the various streaming services and all that they may or may not have to offer. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you on because I have been a big slacker. My world has been taken over by either Hallmark or musical yeah. theater um, okay. because I've been working more and more as a, as a theater critic as well as a movie critic. And so that's yes. taken up most of my binge watching time. I've really only watched two shows this okay. three, I guess, if you count <laughs> uh, this, uh, the, this uh, season. Um, it, but we didn't have you on last year last fall and so i want to catch up on some of your thoughts on things from last year as well uh yeah. but uh but yeah this year i've only watched uh i've watched all creatures great and small season okay. series four season four which i think is the best show on television even though i've only watched okay. two shows <laughs> i still think all it's right. the best it is an absolutely great show such great cast, such good stories. It's so well made. And we're all really excited because it got renewed for two more seasons. Oh, wow. uh, and uh, there was, there's this, um, act, there's this character named Tristan who everybody loves, right. uh, who's the brother of Siegfried, who's the, owns the vet that James works for in the, in the story. And, and okay. anyway, we love him so much. But he uh, was gone last season. And fortunately, they didn't do something stupid like Downton Abbey or these other shows. They didn't like kill him off. They kept him alive. <laughs> and uh, so now he's coming back for seasons okay. five and six. Yay. Um, <laughs> it's a great show. Highly underrated. And uh, and we actually have recapped it on the podcast because uh, I just love it. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of the show? I, I have. I've heard uh, multiple people have reached out in my comment sections and they're oh, like, hey, you got to watch this. And I'm like, I, I know. And I feel so bad. Anytime anyone recommends something, I'm like, yeah, oh, I, I'll try my best to get to it. But there's just <laughs> we, so much out. But it sounds like this is really yeah. good. So maybe we should tell them we, we got it on Hallmarkies if they want recaps okay. every episode. Um, All right. but yeah, it's a great show. And it's and it's there. The, epi the seasons are only seven episodes. So it's oh, that's not bad. It's a, yeah. yeah, it's a quick quick watch and yeah. uh and it's just heartwarming and sweet and it's unbelievable the guy who plays james harriet he this is his first acting role and you can't believe it when you watch it wow yeah gives me um, a holdovers dominic sessa yeah, vibes right? like you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh but yeah i just love i love the show i mean i read the books the james harriet all creatures great and small books and i loved those uh, and there was a show uh, in the eighties, I think on BBC that, mm. uh, that a lot of people, uh, really enjoyed, but I never, I never saw that. So I don't know how this compares to that, but it's just a, a really, really good show. If you, if you like things like one calls the heart or Lit us on the prairie or oh, yeah. Walton, things like that, that are really comforting and kind. And it's got a great romance at the core. Well, actually a couple but one main with james and helen and uh, so highly recommend i've probably seen little house on the prairie every episode three yeah. times my parents yeah. any even now anytime yeah. it's on they're like let's go little house on the prairie i'm like you guys watched this 18 <laughs> years of my life how are you still but they they love yeah. it this that was one of my like nostalgic kind of childhood yeah. shows same i mean i called it little prairie on the house when i was little <laughs> 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 and it it it's underappreciated a little bit on how so. like yeah. old it actually could be little house on the prairie like the 80s it, even if it was just like a silly sitcom they were like kind of bold that you don't really see now as much some good some life of lessons Golden girls in there episodes too. and oh yeah yeah <laughs> we're like pretty happy uh yeah so that's my that is my favorite but uh, I'll, we've also been covering the show called The Way Home. And if you've ever heard of it, it's on, you can watch I it on Peacock. It. Yeah, yeah, I've heard yeah. of that. 
it's a really good show. It uh, it's uh, it's something different for Hallmark uh, that they than they've ever done before. It when mm. there was a, an executive that came over from Netflix to Hallmark, and uh, she kind of brought a couple shows over with her um, from mm. Netflix that were I guess scheduled for Netflix or in competition for Netflix or whatever. And uh, this was one of them. And it's a really good show. It's about these three generation of women. Uh, and uh, they, they, in 1999, they had a family tragedy happen in the family. And mm. and uh, they, they've they never quite completely recovered from the trauma of, of okay. this happening. And one day, one of the one of the girls uh, finds out or discovers that their pond in the back of their house is a time traveling pond. Ooh. Yeah. It's like a yeah, stuff TARDIS. My interest. Yeah. Okay. It's a TARDIS. And, uh, cool. but they don't have any, unlike the TARDIS, they have no control over where the pond takes them. The pond can take them anywhere. Oh, cool. And one of the places that it takes them is 1999. And, and so they're all sent back before mm. this, tragedy happened putting all the pieces together what can they change what can they not change and then sometimes it takes them back to 1814 so you're getting like outlander vibes which is really fun oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. my wife's favorite yeah Uh, yes and and so it's it's a very well done show and it's a very fun show to watch it's still the second season is still ongoing right now it's a really fun show to watch as a group because everybody who's watching notices something different, like, oh, that almanac said 1999 or, oh, over yeah. there, there was the, you know, initials in the, in the, in the tree or, you know what I mean? Everybody notices yeah. something kind of different of like, oh, does that person know about time travel? Does that one not, you know, the different timelines and everything. And, and uh, that makes it fun to like talk about. It's a real water cooler show. Cool. That yeah. sounds really good. Why? Wow, yeah, that's one I would it, love to watch. Yeah, it's really good, and it's not too bad of a binge because it's ten episodes. To, okay. There's that's ten episode bad. one season, and then, uh, and then now we're on episode six mm. of uh, season two. So not too much to catch up on. Very cool. But, um, yeah, but yeah. That you can watch that on Peacock. And all creatures great and small. Unfortunately, it's not on any of the streamers right now, so you have to you'd have to rent it. But um, or I support my local PBS, and so I watch mm. it on there mm-hmm. on um masterpiece. But that's it. That's the only television shows I watched <laughs> this, oh. this year because <laughs> um, I've been so busy. But I, I mean, I of course there ones last year that I watched. Uh, Hilda season three. Did you ever mm-hmm. get on the Hilda? I did, and I I didn't review it, but I was very like um. A real good friend. He's a big animation anime guy. He kind of like, he, even if you're not going to review it, you got to watch it. So I, yeah. I, I'd watched season one, I think, when I talked to you. And so I, uh-huh. I did watch through it. It was very, very good. I didn't get to it before so, my end of the year list last year, mm-hmm. but it probably, it, w- it would have been on there pretty high. Yeah. It was very good. So good. And I was just, I just was so happy that we got a season three because I really thought from the movie that they did that, okay, that felt sort of a final. That felt, like, yeah, okay, we're not going to get any more. And so, it was yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very good. I, I think uh, just in general, did you uh, Blue Eye Samurai on, on Netflix last no, year? I've that was that. that was an animation um, very similar to what Arcane did from an animation style a couple of years ago. Um, but it was uh, one of the coolest samurai uh, very anime mixed with Western animation style. And it is that 3D, you know, at times can be jarring, but I think the way that this show does it, very uh-huh. similar to Arcane, was beautiful. And our main character, she is just one of the most B.A. phenomenal characters I have seen. Well, I think it was my favorite character from last year on TV. Yeah. Um, it was an awesome show. I think it's got an 8.8 on IMDb right now. That is a... If you like that samurai style, um, man, yeah. oh man, it's it's a really really cool show on Netflix. Yeah. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, cool. I I haven't heard of that one. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 Ho ho ho! We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? 
If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Uh, so what are some of the shows that you have been watching lately that uh, you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean... <sighs> You know, honestly, this year has been very up and down when it comes to, <laughs> well, really everything. I think movies, yeah. I, I have been just as a, in, a t in totality, <laughs> I've been very underwhelmed by movies this year prior yeah. to Dune. I, I haven't really, I've liked a couple here and there. Yeah. And since we're talking streaming, you know, you got a lot of Netflix films. Um, Orion in the Dark was cute, kind of went off the rails it, yeah. at the end. Um, but I, but I actually enjoyed that one. That's still pretty I don't high. Understand up, uh, on the why year. they? I don't understand why they didn't release that in theaters because yes, there was nothing. They there was no animated films from since migration all the way to Kung Fu Panda yeah. Four. So and, and I will never understand why they didn't release Robot Dreams. It makes no mm, sense. Why wait until that. May? When here they've got the they've got the Oscars push Oscar nomination. Mm -hmm. There's no animated films or family mm -hmm. films from Wonka onward and migration yeah. onward. Uh, it makes no sense. I think it would have played well. I, I you know I do wish they wouldn't have went as crazy with the ending. It's it's that Charlie Kaufman yeah. as a writer type of off Fair. the rails vibe. But I I do genuinely believe it's a it's a film that works very well for kids, but it kind yeah. of pushes the boundaries in a way to where it works well for adults. So that's probably one of the better Netflix movies I've seen this year. Yeah. Um, and so I guess Society of the Snow counts, even though I saw it last year and I counted as a last year movie. But Society of the Snow came out, I think, January 4th. That was a beautiful film. Otherwise, you're talking Netflix. This year has been just... There was a show from South Korea called... Uh, I think it's called The, uh, the Bequeathed that I was oh. very hyped about. Um, it's about a woman who's uh, someone in her family dies that she doesn't know about. And she's given this uh, supposed to be given this huge sum of money, but there's a lot of people that are fighting her over it and trying to get the, what, what's passed down from one of those relatives. Awesome premise. I was super pumped for it. That was underwhelming. Uh, mm -hmm. All of the movies that I've seen on Netflix lift uh, uh, Mia yeah. culpa absolutely terrible a korean film called badland hunters that i was excited about not very good uh i was even underwhelmed by spaceman i thought spaceman would be a lot better with adam sandler so for mm -hmm. the most part if you're talking specifically netflix which is usually my vibe that's yeah that's what i do you know it, it's been <laughs> underwhelming across the board this yeah. year i think the only one that i can sit back and say actually re really enjoyed was another Korean show called a killer paradox where it's uh kind of similar premise to the last one, but this is more of an investigation series where this guy realizes something and he's going to take out some bad people one by one, but then he kind of lets the power get to its head. Uh, that was a really fun series and it had the same type of quality that I often see in Korean series on Netflix. Uh, but mm, I me, mean, did you enjoy avatar the last airbender? I haven't seen it yet. The new series. Okay. I mean, I love the animation, so me too. it makes me nervous. It, it was. I heard it yeah, wasn't that great. Yeah. I was very up and down, and I thought the first episode showed a lot of potential, but I was very worried about uh, worried about the performances. It seems, and it felt throughout the first few episodes that a lot of these individuals who are playing these iconic characters have never acted before in this way and so you're still trying to sift through the they're learning how to do this and obviously yeah, in front of a big blue screen or 
Yeah, learning on the job. And so you're getting that vibe all throughout. And I don't think the script is doing them any favors because the script is a little rough because they're really condensing a lot of story, but also adding yeah. their own flavor, which I appreciate. You don't yeah. want a full, uh, you know, complete copy of the original. By the time I got to the end, I did think it got better. I think there was a lot of heart within the final few episodes, and I was more on board with the vibe. But just script wise, yeah. I think visually that very Netflix look, I was kind of disappointed yeah. with it. I heard that the One Piece was good though. One On Piece, Nef yeah, yes. Netflix, yeah. That's another show from uh, Netflix that I uh, from last year. You know, I didn't really know a lot. I'd seen episodes of mm -hmm. the anime. It's only been uh, on for like twenty five years. Yeah, and there's like a thousand <laughs> episodes, yeah. but I didn't know what to expect from that. But that was a. That was a remake that kept the core and the heart just from what I had seen and, and according yeah. to a lot of people from the original, but also added its own flavor that was just really, really fun. One of the better mm -hmm. shows in general yeah. that I saw last year. Really, really fun. Well, a couple of things that I've seen on Netflix. Some of these are from last year. Uh, the This I saw at Sundance, but it's on Netflix. The Greatest mm -hmm. Night in Pop is a documentary. I, I, highly re yeah, yeah. I highly recommend it. I, I'm not a big fan of the We Are the World song. You know, and it, so oh, when I first yeah. saw that, I was like, oh no, this is gonna be like an earworm <laughs> in, in my life. And and uh, but it was so well put together. This is a very cool. well done documentary about the had the, the creation of this song and uh yeah. and all of the different personalities that they are bringing together. And they just did a great job of like combining old archival footage and new interviews and and like, there's this whole part where they tell the story of uh, of Stevie Wonder helping uh, Ray Charles find the bathroom, and he's like, it literally <laughs> oh, was no. the blind leading the blind. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! And it was That's just very funny. entertaining stories yeah. like that. And and there's a there's a whole segment where uh, I guess Bob Dylan was really nervous about his solo oh. section, and Stevie, who evidently is, he seems like when why wouldn't he be the nicest guy but he sure seemed like yeah. it in this set uh, and uh he i guess that you, you actually see stevie like helping bob dylan and giving him like a oh, wow. talk and stuff and you're like oh. that's cool <laughs> it's so that one i highly i highly recommend even if you don't like the song it's 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 well done oh sounds iconic yeah, yeah. Another one that i liked i think the hallmarkies will really enjoy i i did a ranking of the romances from 2023 mm. and uh and pretty high was i finally caught up on love at first sight this is a I've very well done that. little rom-com yes yes nice chemistry it's i mean it does it's like your kind of your standard story but i thought it really worked okay okay yeah meet cute on a plane and and uh they're both going over to England for various reasons and they have kind of their mm. backstory and Haley R Lou Richardson. I love her. She's so good. Oh, the I guy love was her. cute. Yeah. yeah. It's a good She's one. Awesome. It's a, it's a really good one. Okay. And I actually really enjoyed survival of the thickest. This was on, this was underrated that nobody really talked about on, this is a series on Netflix. Mm. Uh, Michelle Bandu, I think it's her name. Anyway, she's hilarious. The guy mm. was so, so hot. That <laughs> that's, that's that's enough. <laughs> it was great. Uh, and let's see, was there anything else? I mean, of course, we should talk about Rebel Moon and what a disaster that was. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! I mean, there, this it was just so stupid that they that they didn't just release the movie. Like, yes, so dumb. And now they're saying there's going to be a six hour cut this summer Ridiculous. of the first film after they release the second film. And I'm like, what are you, what are you, this was supposed to be, and I like some of the Snyder films, but this was supposed to be like, oh, they're giving him free reign yeah. to do whatever he wants. And I'm Ridiculous. like, no, they clearly didn't because what I saw, I know it was technically supposed to be half a story, but what I saw was half a movie. It See, was I think that they knew it wasn't that close. great. So they're like, what Ugh. can we possibly do to Maybe. either excuse it not yeah. being that great or like create some kind of buzz around mm -hmm. this flawed product? And they and so I think at this point, like it feels like Zack Snyder is taking like he's both taking this all to his head, but also just like a, kind of abusing his fans like mm -hmm. that he, I, he's manipulating them.
the Snyder cut movement yeah. constantly. And it's like it, it one film. Let's just one film. But if if this is going to be a thing with every one of his movies, it's it's already gotten old, but it's going to get even older yeah. very quick. And I can't I have no I have no interest in the second part at this point, yeah. but I really have no interest in this because if it's really six hours, like come on, guys, what are we doing here? Yeah. What are we doing? Did you watch Sweet Magnolia season three? Uh season? I watched the first two episodes of it. I didn't yeah. get I didn't get through it. What so how so I was like, okay, let's see what happens, but I didn't I just got I don't, lost with it. I don't blame you. I I even kind of wonder if we'll even cover it for season four because Really? Yeah, oh, I no. it was just not great. And I was shocked that it got renewed for more because the ending was them like toasting. It felt like okay, this is the end. But especially what they did with Helen was very annoying. And uh, it just, I don't know. I, I I was just shocked because it felt like nobody's talking about it. Our recaps did not do well. Uh, it just, I was just like, who wants another season? <laughs> Frankly, Well, that's part. That's partially why I, I got my screener and watched the first two episodes. And I was like, I'm not. One, I'm not really, really feeling this season. Two, yeah. I'm not really feeling the hype for it. And I guess yeah. it did, like you said, did well enough for season four. But I, yeah, not where I was on the first two seasons because I genuinely enjoyed those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess the last Netflix. Well, so I was not a fan of the Bridgerton Queen Charlotte, the spinoff thing they it. did. I didn't, I didn't like it. it. Most people liked it, but it was like mm. torture the the series. Like <laughs> it wasn't romantic. It wasn't fun. It was maybe oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Like I just don't <laughs> like it was just kind of miserable. I don't understand oh, really. Man. I guess if people were prepared for it being this like drama, like a marriage yeah. in crisis story, but I wanted Bridget. I wanted it to be fun, and I didn't. It I wasn't. didn't like it. Um, Interesting, but I am so excited for season three i it's 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 ridiculous like i <laughs> there's this whole <laughs> podcast where all they do is they break down scene by scene any scene with with poland with yeah. the penelope and colon and they're like oh he's wearing green in that scene yeah. or yellow that's penelope's <laughs> color i mean it's it's absurd but i love <laughs> and i'm just trying so hard to not not make it have this unrealistic expectation that it can never meet, but I'm not, I don't think I'm, su I'm not succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, when does that come out, Rachel? What's the hey, date? On that? It hey, comes okay. out the first half. And then the second half is in June. Oh, they're doing the half thing. Yeah. So I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. I just cannot wait. I love Nicole Coughlin so much. And I, oh, it's going to be so good. And, uh, <laughs> So I'm, I'm very excited for that. And, uh, but then Heartstopper, that was the Heartstopper yes. season two was perfect. Yes. Was that was, so that good. was amongst my um, favorite television last year in my favorite Netflix series list. Yeah. Yeah. It was so good. I didn't get to review season one of Heartstopper. And then I was, I was like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm missing something. So I watched it super late yeah. and I was like, let's go season two. Season two was great. <laughs> uh, another show I, I completely forgot. Did you watch the fall of the house of Usher? No, this is very no. dark. It's from the guy. I mean, it's Flanagan who did Hill house yeah. and Bly Manor. That was my favorite show on Netflix last oh, year. Okay. It was awesome. It was a Good. mystery. I think it was more of a mystery than a horror, although there are some brutal R-rated scenes in that show. Um, it's probably even more brutal than Hill House was, just not as scary. Uh, but it was a it was a very intriguing mystery as to what was happening, and they took a lot of Edgar Allan Poe lore and applied it into the into the show and they took a lot of his books and and turned them into episodes it's very interesting what they mm -hmm. did so i think mm -hmm. one of some of flanagan's best work from last yeah. year it was great. oh cool that's good to know yeah. that's good to know hey this is jen johans host of the podcast watch with jen which delivers a steady stream of great movie recommendations thoughtful career deep dives and first-rate conversations with film critics authors actors journalists filmmakers and more you can find watch with jen wherever you get your podcasts or hear us first at our patreon at patreon.com slash film intuition a couple other things that on streaming that I watched last year, of course, mm -hmm. R.I.P. Schmigadoon season two was 
so good and they've got the <laughs> whole season three written and ready to go but it got canceled so oh, sad goodness. they have 27 mm. songs written they've got it all done mm. and i i just loved it you know i'm a musical theater person so the whole chicago and and mm. everything and the fact they were able to get the entire cast back except for fred armiston he's the only one even Ariana DeBose came back which like for mm. season one made sense because broadway was closed and so they all you know but the fact they got aaron tevitt back the kirsten chenoweth back like mm. everybody that was special it was it was really special. what's up with all these shows getting i mean there are a lot of really really shows yeah. that i thought were high quality on netflix that got canceled last year yeah. and they just canceled the one with michelle yo that i i haven't watched it yeah. um the brothers whatever yeah. uh but uh, but the, everybody said it was really good yeah they just canceled it i mean on one hand i'm not a hundred percent shocked because i'm sure schmigadoon was a very expensive show to make uh sure. the sets the huge cast all those musical sequences. I'm sure it's really expensive, but yeah. they had it all done. 27 songs are. And I was just, oh, I would because because the next the next season would be focused on the, the 80s. And I would just die to see that. Oh, that's cool. To see an homage to Les Miserables and Phantom of the Opera and Cats. Oh my gosh, we could do cats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's darn it. Well, that and cool. you think of all the hard work that people put in. They're like, "Oh, we're yeah. ready to go for season mm. three. and then you get that news, and it's like, "Oh my goodness!" Like, yeah. Uh. So anytime Apple makes something terrible, I'm be like, "You could have used that money to, to do Springdale, and you did this yes. instead." Yes, there were a handful <sighs> of Apple shows. There was that one that actually just I started watching screeners for. Um, I can't remember what. Uh, one of very talented actress. It's she's in space, and she comes back to. Earth. Oh. It's a it's a brand new show. I watched an episode and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, I just feel that way about a lot. I liked the uh, Austin Butler the, that series, the Masters the world. Of the Air. Yeah, that was that was pretty. Yeah, I heard good. that was good. Um, yeah, I liked that one a lot. That's one of the better shows that I've seen this year. I've actually got a couple shows from random uh, platforms. I'll talk about here in a little bit that I've yeah. seen this year that I've liked. Uh, but you've all, you also have that just. For every good show, there are two bad shows, and yeah. it's like these stay afloat, and somehow these are getting canceled. I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm well, not it, sure. That is so true. Like, for example, the fact that we're getting another season of and just like that, like what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? I've, heard, I've heard nothing. It's like they're doing it just to, to just just for just to pick on me. I I, I take yeah. it as a personal affront because uh, we cover Sex in the City on this show and. That means I have to cover another season of I mean, just like that. <laughs> there's good, so and, there's good and bad works. with what we do, Rachel. And sometimes that is when what we do feels like work. <laughs> that is when it's work. <laughs> it's like there's so many shows that I don't get to see because I don't have time. Like I haven't watched One Piece yeah. yet. I haven't watched Shogun yet. Like all these things I've heard Shogun's... these great things about. And now yeah. I have to watch it. And just like that. <laughs> Well, that's my that's my problem too. Everybody's like, Austin, why didn't you review this or why didn't you watch this? And I'm like, I want to, but there's just so many shows. It's like yeah. if I could clone myself, it would be <laughs> awesome. And then on top of all the shows, there's all the movies. And so it's yeah. like I just right. don't have time. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, a couple of movies that I saw at Sundance that will be coming to Ooh, yes, um, some other ones that will be coming to streaming or are already on streaming. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for Real Pain. Very fun. Uh, this is Jesse that? Eisenberg wrote and directed, yes! and I did not oh, like his wait. previous effort, so I was excited I that, it. yeah, yeah, that I liked this so much. And uh, it, and it's got Karen Culkin, and he he does a really good job of taking a character that is very insufferable and unlikable. All right. And making him he's good at that endearing. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and it. it if it, it it's interesting because you never actually see their grandma their grandmother's passed away but their love for their grandma how beloved she was like is somebody mm -hmm. who just my grandma was one of my best friends uh mm -hmm. you, you connect with it oh i can't wait for that. yeah that's that was my most anticipated of the festival so yeah. i can't wait for yeah and then uh thelma super fun if you like m movies about sort of crotchety old people <laughs> which is mm, okay. a favorite of mine. Uh, the June Spriggs, she plays 
this woman who gets oh, scammed yeah. and her and Richard Roundtree uh, go on this mission. This They're trying to be like Mission Impossible, like All Tom right. Cruise and Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> okay really, really cute i remember got, seeing that uh, image yeah, yeah it's got clark Gregg from the avengers oh cool yeah he's in it it's it's very good and uh and then sun coast that's out now on hulu i like recommend that. it yeah it was good yes. well written well acted uh some of the elements were like what why is woody harrison in this movie i didn't know quite get it, it was still very well, good. you don't know what kind of character he's going to be at first. And then it's like, yeah. oh, I, I kind of, I was a little like, I appreciate what they did with some of the coming of age elements because I thought her friends were going to be insufferable. Yeah. And I ended up actually like, oh, I guess some of them yeah. actually care about her. So that yeah, was they kind of a, like mean girls. Yes. Yes. It was. So they did a little 180 there, but the, mm. the stuff with her brother obviously was, um, was mm. really great. I, I found the ending of that one to be Really Got emotional. So that's actually not a lot of great movies this year. That one's in yeah. the upper echelon of films I've agree. seen this year. My favorite movie from the festival. Well, I did love Hitman, which is coming to Netflix. And you definitely. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, that. that's really good. Um, but uh, my favorite movie of the festival is, I'm, I'm not sure who bought it, but um, is a movie called Ghost Light. You want to keep an eye out for it. Ghost Light. Uh, this okay. was for the community theater lover heart that I have. This was kind yeah. of the perfect movie. Yeah, it's about okay. this con- this kind of surly construction worker. His son has committed suicide. So obviously, he's in a very low place. And he gets kind of recruited to be uh, Romeo in a community theater production of Romeo and Juliet. And Interesting. It, it's so... And it's got uh, um, Donnie DeLeon. She's she's the oh. Juliet. And she's so fun. So cute. And and, uh, and it, it was, it's kind of funny because he's she like sees him out on uh you know working and stuff and she's like here you need to come with me right now <laughs> and she like, okay I'm like this could be a new approach for community theater i you're in a production <laughs> of romeo and juliet whether you want to be or not <laughs> <laughs> it's it it's very and what's really cool too is that the so the mother father and daughter are a real mother father daughter oh okay in okay. real life in real life Cool. Yeah, so they have that like chemistry. It was very great. cool. Highly recommend. Um, right. Well, my favorite movie from last year was a streaming movie. Uh, it's uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. I, you know, I still and every, <gasps> awesome. I still, I missed it when I had my chance for review, and I'm just like, I guess I won't watch it. And every time I see some somebody else was talking the other day about bad romances in movies and somebody put a, a gif below it and said watch red right red white and royal blue so i need i need to watch that i really oh, do it's so good i it's kind of my new comfort watch like i have All logged right. it i think 10 times on <laughs> that's how i was with the holdovers i logged yeah. it so many times it's yeah. so good i just I just love it. I love Red, White, and Royal Blue so much. They had yeah. incredible chemistry. It had huge hearts. It was very well done. Enemies to lovers, wow. and uh, uh, but I mean Emma, Uma Thurman. Her accent is kind of wonky, but that's about all <laughs> that I could fault. Oh, I didn't it. know I she was, it was in it. Oh, yeah, okay. she plays the president because it's about Whoa, it's right. about the I president's son and the prince, uh, the prince of England. Okay, no. Oh, yeah. I thought it was just in an in, in an England type of okay, no, so that's no. really cool. Yeah, yeah. So and they hate each other that's first. Cool. And, yeah. It's so well see, normally you see movies like that. Every now and then you get a, a really good one, but normally you see movies like that and you're like, I don't know if this is going to go down trying to be heartwarming and a little like, you know knowing the type of movie that's going yeah. to be or if it just falls flat because you know i've seen so many of those movies on netflix and they try to have that heart and charm and they just fall yeah. flat but as soon as i started seeing i think on letterbox it's got a really rocking score so yeah. i i really do need to see i mean that. i i really did love the book so i i, I was pretty sure that i was going to love the movie and they do yeah. change things quite a bit around from the book uh but uh it's just a good story i okay. I, I feel like there's yeah. not that many uh, situations, thankfully, I guess that that yeah. like somebody would be kind of feel the pressure to sort of hide 
who they mm-hmm. are and their sexuality. I feel like a royal is a pretty believable situation, you know, yes. where they might feel pressured to do that. And so yes. it's I, I feel like it's almost kind of like the last way to sort of tell that particular story as effectively yeah. as they did. So it was real smart. I like that. I yeah. like that. Highly, Thanks. highly recommend it. Um, let's see. What else? Have you seen the one day show? I heard that's good on Netflix. One day. No. Which one is that one? I'm trying to think of. So it's based on a novel, which they made the Anne Hathaway movie, which was bad. But right. I've heard that this is good. Let me see. One day. I want to go look at the. Uh... Yeah. I And they're building it as a rom-com. The, the book slash movie was not a rom-com. Uh, no, this is yeah, this is the one that I missed in early February, and everybody's like, "Why didn't you review one day?" And I, <laughs> I just didn't hear it. But like, I even, yeah. you know, looked through it. I probably just skimmed past it on the Netflix. But yeah, that that's the scores are very high, and and yeah. everyone said it was just a beautiful adaptation. So yeah, I, I need to get to that. One. I'll definitely have to check that out. I did watch Upgraded. This is just this was just a movie, not yeah. a series. But I thought it was cute. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was good. Oh, the the film. I thought you meant the show on uh, Amazon with with Amel, Robbie Amel. Let's, oh, what's that yeah. One called? No, this is the little movie. It's kind of like Devil Wears Prada esque. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Woman yes. who wants to be like an art dealer, so she she goes. She goes over to England with her boss, and mm-hmm. and Marissa Tomei's character. A little of her went a long way. She's no Meryl Streep, but. Uh, but uh, it was it was fun. It was a cute little yes. little movie, I would say. Um, there so, was a, there was a film that I watched on Netflix that had a very similar. I can't remember the name of it last year. Very similar premise that I did not like. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, what was the name of it? But um, yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of strange that you you see that genre on Netflix all the time. And I've, I've been seeing it a lot more on Amazon prime lately. And there was the other movie on prime role play, which I didn't oh. like, but uh, did you see that? <laughs> no, I didn't see that one. Uh, yeah. Was that, that was from last year or this year? This year, they're trying oh. to go for a Mr. And Mrs. Smith kind of vibe, except one is a spy yeah. and the other one isn't except the whole, you know, first chunk, first half of the film is, one huge exposition dump and then the whole second half of the film uh the you think it's building up to like action sequences and things like that and it was just such a misfire i loved the premise and uh-huh. i believe i want to say it was chuatel edgy of four uh, two really really good actors uh-huh. uh but uh but yeah that one fell really really flat uh-huh. for me really well but speaking of mr and mrs smith i heard that new show is pretty good it Have is pretty it? good it's yeah. yes and that was one i was going to talk about um I think it's it's got the you know often you see Donald Glover in a show and there's a, a very specific vibe because he he brings just the way he writes and the way that um, projects that he's a part of it was very witty. Uh, I loved the dialogue between the two. I think the casting is really spot on, and I love how it's not just a repeat of whether it be the movie or the original show or. I guess that's not the original because there's one before that, but it was kind of a new, it was kind of its own thing, a new version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So I really like what they did with it, uh, but it really is all about the dialogue, which is just boom. So much charisma between the two characters as you get more into it. So I really liked it. Mm. Yeah, I heard, I heard that one was good. Uh, Of course we have Outlander season seven, part one. And we have to My wait life. until oh, yeah. like June. They, they haven't officially announced, but sometime this summer we'll get part two. So how did you feel about, so I, I'm still way behind. I'm trying to catch up so I can watch it with her. Yeah. Uh, was it season six that wasn't as good apparently, or was it season five? According it was to season mind. five that's <laughs> okay, not as good. Five, yes. Yeah. Yeah. For most that's people. That's what she told me. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. Uh, they, cause we didn't get. Jamie and Claire were apart for a lot of that season. And, okay. uh, and so uh, this, I think first part of seven part one was pretty good. A lot of war right. though. And a lot of kind mm. of, <laughs> a lot of, <laughs> a lot of oh, blood and a lot of, you know, so it's not as sexy as some seasons right. of yeah. Outlander. <laughs> okay. Okay. But still, I mean, but still good. Like they're getting so back good. on track from, yes. from season. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? 
What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Little movie. I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, but what the heck. Um, Little movie that it, I don't know where it'll end up as far as streaming, but you should definitely keep on your radar. Is yeah. It's called Molly and Max in the Future. And this mm. is... Uh, we had the director on uh, the the podcast. I saw it last year at South by Southwest. I loved it. It was my favorite of the festival. It's kind yeah. of a sci-fi, like Tron meets Doctor Who meets When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. And uh, it's right. uh, this in this futuristic world. These two keep bumping into each other over the years, and you see their relationship kind of grow and evolve and everything. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's it's really incredible. You should at least follow the the TikTok for Molly and Max because to see how they basically made this whole movie out, out of his like out of his like apartment, him and his friend. Like that's, it's so cool, cool what they were able to do with like making miniatures and just like they basically oh. spent most of COVID like just working on this and making okay. uh, it, it's I, I think it's it's it was such an interesting thing because it came to theaters the same weekend as madam webb you're just like oh. look at what these people were able to do with like oh. some creativity and out of their apartment and mm -hmm. look at what <laughs> sony mm. did mm -hmm. you know gosh so it, it's it, it is i really enjoyed it and it even has, speaking of Madam Web, it has the same actress who played the, you know, in Madam Web, how there's just that bizarre henchman who's just like glued to yeah. that chair looking up data for yes. <laughs> that guy. Yes. Zoja, Zoja, I think is her name. Anyway, she is the lead in Molly and Max. <laughs> okay. Well, thank God for that. My yeah. goodness. Madam Web's, that could be a career killer across the board. So <laughs> it really could. that's good. I, I I really hate using words like lazy because I like to think that people are trying, but I just uh -huh. I I just couldn't use any other word for Madam Web. It just hey, felt lazy. Speaking of lazy, I know you were a big fan of this. Do you want to talk about Megamind? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you yeah. were a massive fan, Rachel. <laughs> yes. Um what a show. Uh, or what a what a, I'm sorry, what a movie. I'm not watching the show. I refuse. Oh, I'm not no, doing it. Never. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, and the, the thing is, is, and some people were like, well, what did you expect? It was a Megamind sequel. I'm like, this is the same people who managed to pull a masterpiece out of Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And yeah. Nobody will be able to tell me differently. They made that into an absolutely stunning, creative, funny, film and so don't tell me that they couldn't have done something worth watching for megamind it's ridiculous well that's what i said it's like a part of me feels bad for ragging on a straight to peacock movie but at the same time not only did they make puss in boots out out of a you know i didn't even i wasn't even thrilled about a puss in boots sequel and then no, i saw that movie no. and i'm like oh my god oh my god <laughs> but then you have to look at the first megamind is it's not a masterpiece or anything but it was a good Really fun, great premise, a lot of potential for a sequel, which I've been yeah. saying for years. Yeah. And so you take all that and you just crumble it up and destroy any hope for this franchise and its future. And I heard the creator saying, well, you know, if, if this is <laughs> not respond too well, but I guess if it performs well on Peacock, we'll think about doing a, a straight to, you know, move a, a movie theater experience for the third film. And I'm like, no one wants a third film now. You've ruined the franchise. Yeah, it's, it's done. True. It's over. Yeah. It, it was that bad. Yeah. It was that bad. No, I agree. If it's not the worst movie I see in 2024, then that's depressing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It's, <laughs> it, 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 I don't think anything will be worse than this. Cause like I, I hated Madam Webb. I hated Tyler Perry's Mia Culpa. I hated, um, 
What's another one that I've hated? I didn't like Lift very much. There have been there have been a lot yeah. of really bad movies this year. <laughs> that is far and away the worst film I've seen this yeah. year. Far it and away. Was. Yeah. And I have the art book for the original. I love the original. I've always yeah. felt like it got the raw end of the stick when it came to it came to things because everybody everybody loved Despicable Me, and so Megabine mm-hmm. kind of got lost in the in the in the mm-hmm. sea of minions and and so the fact that they would do that and mm-hmm. they would make it so bad, you know, it's yes. just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with DreamWorks. I really don't. I mean, they I had, I, I felt like Ruby Gilman was one of the underrated films of last year. I actually really mm. enjoyed it. And Still I even had the director it. on my channel and talked mm. to him. Cause I just felt like the whole thing got like a raw deal. Even if people didn't like the movie, the fact it was just mm-hmm. dumped and there was no, no marketing no. nobody cared no marketing. like yeah it, it it was it was ridiculous to me and uh so i want i had him on my show because i just wanted him to know that like one person liked you know yes. what he did um but like it's so discouraging because dreamworks they have the bad guys which was really good and then they have mm-hmm. puss in boots the last witch which was in my opinion was a masterpiece and awesome. then to see what they've done since is just what are you doing? I mean, they have that. Then they have Orion in the Dark that they don't even really send straight to Netflix. And then yeah. they they it makes me really nervous for Kung Fu Panda Four, which I'm seeing tonight actually, uh, okay. because how can you have faith in it? They, yeah. Uh, and I didn't even love the last Kung Fu Panda. It was okay, but I I think the first one is just so well done. The second one's really fun, and so the last yeah. one I'm like, okay, it's it's fine, it's okay. Um, so I'm a little. I'm a little mixed on how I'm going to feel about this one, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't, uh, and then speaking of not very good animated films, did you see the tiger's apprentice on Paramount? No, Plus? I haven't caught, I haven't caught that yet. Yeah. Bad. Not very good. <laughs> not very good. They, they go for the, uh, that big moment at the beginning of big hero six, really emotional. Uh-huh. They, they do that at the beginning of this film. And so I'm like, okay, that's yeah. Good kicker. Good way to start. And then he follows this uh, who is like to be his master and training him and all this stuff. And it becomes just a a series, a movie riddled with cliches just across the board. And the animation gets worse as the movie goes. There's something about lazy animation this year that's just bugging me. Yeah. And they're dumping these films on streaming. And I'm just like, why are we doing this? There, there's yeah. The standard has been set so high the last few years. It's crazy. Well, and it's just frustrating when you have these crap films that get released and then something like Acme versus Coyote is yeah. stuck. Cancel. Like, uh-huh. It's just dumped and people don't even uh-huh. get the chance to see it. It's just no ridiculous. It's ridiculous. When the people involved with Acme said it's, it's which, you know, of course they're going to say that, but they've actually said it's a really good movie. Yeah. Did like, you Hey, see we that? like this. Do you see that Will Forte <laughs> tweet? Yes. That he did? Yes. Oh. Yeah. It's it just bizarre. I, they need uh-huh. to get rid of that tax loophole. If there's any way to get rid of that, because it's just destroying art. It's crazy. It, it's mm-hmm. crazy. And I, I uh, it's I'm scared because now I'm like, are other studios going to start doing this? I mean, maybe Sony should have jumped on it quicker with Madame Moya. But other than that, are other studios going to start doing this? <laughs> like, yeah, that's it's a really scary well, thought. Nothing I guess there was safe. Uh, I guess there was a, a, a Holly Berry movie. The Netflix did this. The Netflix buried uh, that they did that with. Uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's happening. I, think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting. Uh, the last hmm. show, I guess, that I wanted to talk about was because we have uh, One Calls the Heart season 11 coming hmm. in a, a couple of weeks. And season 10 was so well done. I mean, this show, really? it is what it is. But but <laughs> the crazy thing about this show is that it it stays on like safe comfort level, like okay. 99% of the time. It's just like Elizabeth and kids and sweetness and you know family and whatever and then every once in a while they're like oh! <laughs> and they what go the... crazy and that's what they did season really? 10 yes right. like it was so obvious that something happened in the middle of the season that made them completely change change gears because they were building up for uh like elizabeth was engaged and then they have uh nathan that was starting this relationship or maybe starting this relationship with this character named faith all of a sudden in, in episode five 
uh, the faith and Nathan have this conversation about like, Oh, our relationship didn't work out. And I was like, what are you talking about? You never had a relationship. And I was like, yeah, we're better as just friends. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> so it was so bizarre. And so then all of a sudden from like episode six onward to the end, there was like a total change in plot where it was like, oh, okay. So all of a sudden things aren't going well between Elizabeth and Lucas and uh, cause in season eight, uh, Elizabeth had chosen Lucas over Nathan, which was like a huge, whoa, you know, and okay. anyway, and, uh, and so all of a sudden it's like, okay, they, that's why I thought, oh, is Chris McNally who plays Lucas, is he leaving the show? But he's not. So the whole thing is just bonkers. So you're watching every episode. You're like, what? And in the, <laughs> in the finale of the season, she leaves Lucas and she doesn't leave for Nathan, but it's very clear. She keeps having all these longing looks between her and Nathan. You're like, yeah. what? How in five episodes? Like I've never been so transfixed to television because I just couldn't believe that they were actually doing this, you know, that this was happening. And of course, everybody's freaking out. The fans are just like so upset. And uh, so uh, I can't wait for season 11 because what uh <laughs> i like when tv's that far in you're 10 yeah. seasons in they're just like all right listen guys we gotta, we gotta spice it up what can it's we like do the red so, wedding yeah, it sounds of, like that's what they're doing yeah the yeah red, like the red, red wedding, wedding yeah. Of valley. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah uh, so that's that's good the other show that i i have not caught up with but i heard season four was really good is um the chosen and I know there's lots. Yes, of chosen, I've heard it's great. Uh, yes. But I, I I need to catch up. But uh, but this, that thing's been doing gangbusters in theaters. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah, that, that those things go to theaters and they premiere episodes and they do huge numbers compared yeah. to the budget and huge numbers. So yeah, I'm I'm on um, still on season three. So I need to yeah. uh, need to catch up quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. I think we covered everything, and uh, we'll have to have it. Maybe have you back after Bridgerton season three yes oh. yeah oh, there are i think across the board this spring going into summer there's gonna be a lot of tv shows coming out of the new borderland series on amazon we've got uh this june's gonna be huge for television so i i mean there's we've got a stacked rest of the year yeah. which is good because again i've seen shows that i like like the first two episodes of shogun were really good but I, i've I'm still waiting on that show this year to kind of blow me away. Cause and, I think last year there was some great television. And don't we have arcane season two finally this? Yes. I believe uh, at the end of this year, November ish. Yeah. So oh, uh, oh, I can't wait. I know. Can't wait. Uh, well, very good. Thanks so much for doing this. This was a lot of fun to catch up and uh, hear what you've been watching and let us know if you're listening, what you have been watching, what shows you would recommend or streaming movies. We'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, Austin, if people want to watch your channel, uh, your reviews, how do they do that? Yeah, of course you guys can find me, uh, YouTube, just Austin Burke. There's a singer and then there's me. So I'm not the singer, even though I get his emails all the time. So one of these days I may be singing. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I watch as many shows as I can, as many movies as I can. And this weekend I'll be uh, covering the Oscars. You can find me over there on Letterboxd, uh, Twitter and Instagram at The Birkinator, even though apparently Instagram is down today. So maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're saying. Yeah, there's something going on with Meta today. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, Homeworkies Pod, Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And like I said, we have we have recaps of every episode of And Just Like That. So we got it there for you. And we have, we have recaps of a much better show, All Creatures Great and Small, and One Calls the Heart uh in our uh our show so make sure you check those out and uh and also for a lot of things we have red white and blue recap uh we have uh sweet magnolias so we got you covered over here on homeworkies podcast please take a look and uh, check out the patron and merch store if you're listening on itunes please leave your ratings and reviews and if you're watching on youtube please give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel we sure appreciate that and uh, thanks so much everybody we'll talk to you later bye <laughs>